I'm Luis Arocha. This is my beautiful wife Jennifer. We're our, at our apartment in Santiago, Dominican Republic. If you don't know where Dominican Republic is, it's next to Haiti. Uh, another thing about our city is that our city is about a million people and is in the center of the island, so we don't see the ocean from here. But it's the most agricultural part of the island. Uh, so we have a lot of business in agriculture. And that's what I do. I, I work in agriculture. I like my work in the sense that it's very slow. I don't have to sh ship every day, but every week. And plants grow slow. So things don't change dramatically from one day to the other. You know, we're reformed. We're all familiar with the phrase from the Westminster Catechism. What is the main end of man or something like that? Chief man. Chief end of man. Well, to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. I was good with glorifying God. That part, yeah, I understood that. Bueno, es especial cuando nosotros, por la misericordia del Señor, nuestros ojos fueron abiertos y conocimos a Cristo. Nosotros nos convertimos en julio del 80 y a finales de julio, a principios de agosto, él fue a un campamento de niños y le preguntaron a todos los niños que qué le gustaría hacer cuando grande. Y el pastor cuando regresó me dijo que se quedó maravillado, que el único que dijo que le gustaría ser pastor fue Luis. Y eso fue algo que impresionó mucho mi corazón. The church said that they wanted to consider me to be the next pastor of the church or one of the, to join the pastoral staff. And I was not sure I wanted to be a pastor. I think I liked my secular job better. It had, I think I was more attracted to my secular job. I liked, I grow plants and I liked growing plants more than ministry in the church. He loved to play uh, golf. He spent a lot of hours playing golf. Um, that made me mad sometimes, very mad. We have some good friends in, in, in Minneapolis who we've known since 1996 or something like that. Those friends invited our three pastors. We were There were three pastors back then and me to go to the pastors conference in Minneapolis. So I did go. There was a shock. How can John Piper be so theologically sound and at the same time be worshiping like this? So I said, I want to understand what's in his mind, how he uh, reconciles those two things. Either you are theologically sound or you are lightheaded and worship with a lot of emotions. So I wanted to understand. And since the ministry was called Desiring God, I said, well, this book, Desiring God, is probably one of the most important books that he has written. And I started reading it and I just couldn't put it down. Um, I, I even bought a little lamp to put on my bed so that I could read while she was sleeping and not bother her with the big light. He went to Minnesota and when he came home, he was totally different. I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, he was completely different. He was. He would come home immediately, he would grab a book, a John Piper book, of course, and he would devour that book until more than midnight. And I was, I was so eager to know, I, I mean, why are you studying that much? I mean, he read books before, but not like that. I was intrigued. Why was that? When I went to the pastor's conference, I remember Tuesday afternoon, I was 100% sure I wanted to be a pastor. My heart wants to do things that are of eternal consequence. Y Luis ha cambiado su vida como hijo, como amigo, como pastor. Eh, es notorio la pasión que tiene por servir. I was given opportunities to preach maybe once every three months. 
uh, in the evening service. So I told Dad, I'm going to preach something about the glory of God and delighting in God and the relationship between the two. I went a long time, almost like an hour and 20 minutes. But when I came down, a lot of people were like, thank you for the sermon. Wow, it was a great sermon and so on. It was like an explosion at the church. I mean, many people talked to me and to him and they would say, I've never heard something like that. <laughs> and I, I told these people, yeah, I know, me too. Entonces comenzamos a estudiar las escrituras, ver lo que decía sobre todo John Piper, acomodarlo, compararlo con las escrituras y entonces seguir ese camino. This is a new church. The church is growing, not only, not only in spiritual life, but in number also. Revival in our church. Al modo que al día de hoy entiendo que todos nosotros en la iglesia eh, puedo decir que Dios nos ha dado un corazón para él en adoración, en el cual eh, damos una ofrenda, sacrificios de labios que ofrendan a su nombre la palabra. Pero definitivamente ha habido un cambio radical, muy bueno y que se ha contagiado. Another way that I tried to spread was uh, inviting a lot of pastors from our country to come to the next pastors conference. It was a group of more than 30 pastors from the Dominican Republic and other Latin American countries that went there, and I translated the conference for them into Spanish. And I've seen also some fruit there, and they are also now spreading to their churches and to people they have influence. When we saw that treasure that we couldn't see before, it was there in the Bible, but it was not there for us because we didn't have eyes to see it. We didn't have someone to tell us that before Piper. And then we got it, and it's so wonderful. How could we keep it? it it's, it's the joy pro that produces to a person. I mean, you can't, you can't hide it. You can't keep it. You have to spread it.